Welcome back to Good Moms, Bad Choices. I'm Erica. And I'm Mila. Happy hump day, bitches. Happy motherfucking hump day. How are you feeling? I'm great. I'm, if you're watching this right now on YouTube, I am Palo Santing. Palo Santing? Is that a word? Palo Santing? The room. Um, to clear the energy. We had some other potters in our studio today. Um, which, by the way, if you are a podcaster in the L.A. area, make sure you check out our studio space, Good Good Media, goodgoodproductions.com, to book your podcast, even a consultation. Maybe you want to start a podcast, don't know where to start. Ask us. We're kind of experts, sort of, in this space. Not sort of, bitch. <clears throat> um, so make sure you check that out. But uh, I'm feeling good. I'm ch- I'm clearing the energy. Oh, Thank you. Oh. We're actually live right now. We have our phone on live on IG, so we have some people joining us. We have an audience. Hello, audience. Hello. Hello, Instagram tribe. Um, it's November. We've left October behind. I feel like we had a pretty epic October se- like episode month. We had an epic October episode month. October episode month. And we just had a lot of shit going on in October in general. So much. I mean, when do we not have a lot of I shit mean, going on? I mean, but like every <laughs> single weekend, I was like, God damn. It's because there's a lot of October people, babies and things. I mean, nature. but we were like, we were working, we went to San Francisco. Was that in October? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Went to San Francisco. I went to Vegas to see Usher for 36 hours. <laughs> I did a Clara event. I fucking went to Palm. Where did we go? We went to Joshua, Joshua Tree. Tree. The bitch... Had a live show. Had, oh yeah, I had a live show. I was like, "There's something else." <laughs> We've had quite the month. Yeah, I turned uh, 31. You turned 31. It's been quite a month. Yeah, it's and great. it's Halloween, our favorite month. So, I think it's getting ready for hibernation time. It's it's tucking us in for the winter. You know, normally when we have you know every month we have a, a theme. I'm gonna be honest, y'all. We don't really have a theme this month. The theme is fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it, November. Fuck it, November. Fuck it, November. I like it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> it's just a mystery box. Mystery it's box. A mystery November. box, November. November. I love that. Um, yeah. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Um, I'm feeling really good. Um, I feel good. We had like a really good meeting today. Um, but I have been feeling a bit like go 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 go. I am had my last fucking tantra class today and i leave in two weeks to go test out this bitch congratulations so I'm, I'm so fucking happy i mean i feel overwhelmed by it but then now that i realize oh shit bitch this it now i'm getting a little energized by it because at first i was like how the fuck is this gonna work out but i feel good i feel grateful to be busy and to be stressed out about shit that i like to do mm-hmm fun shit i'm like i'd rather be busy and like and at a high capacity performing like high level performing when i know that all the shit is like every single thing i like to do Mm -hmm. and ultimately it benefits you no it all and and all the things you want to do so it's not like you know you're doing a bunch of shit for other people that ultimately isn't going to do anything for you yeah because i've done that too Mm -hmm. so this feels good i feel really i'm excited yeah Mm -hmm. good um I was actually, while I was waiting for you, I was going through our, our pictures from the live show, and I was just, like, tapping through. I'm like, oh, it looks so cute. And then I'm just, like, <laughs> us on stage in sparkly outfits with our tits out <laughs> and our asses out. And then you see, like, Lizzie Jeff in the back with her tits out. I was like, this is the ultimate girls' party. Also, is this real life? Like, <laughs> you're doming somebody with a cute, you're like, literally, we we found a man on the internet if you didn't come to the la show and you live in la you missed you the fuck fucking out. really missed out because shit just magically came together at the last minute too yeah, really did. me and mila like a few weeks ago went to see a little dragon and then we got we went ended up going to this other party and we were on we were like on mushrooms just vibing out and then this like man appears out of nowhere body rolling towards us Yep. Literally, just like, like that, doing body rolls. <laughs> it was like a mirage and in the desert. It was <laughs> making like extreme eye contact, and I was like, "Oh my god, what's happening here?" And I, it was like fun. Like I was actually, like, who the fuck is this guy? And then he was dead ass serious. <laughs> <laughs> and then we body rolled with him. And then immediately afterwards, me and Mila looked at each other and we're like, "Live show. We need him for the live show." And then he came to the live show, and who did he come? Did he come, baby? Baby, Rico brought it okay rico brought the heat 
If anyone's getting married and has a bachelorette party of friends getting married, I endorse this message. I endorse Rico 100%. I put my money on Rico. I put my money on Rico. And I, in fact, I don't even know when I'm getting married, but I have told all my friends, at least three of them, that they better fucking hire Rico for my bachelorette party. I'm put, we, we're going to, I'm going to share Rico's <laughs> IG in the, in the, in the, whatever, the caption of this episode because he deserves a shout out. He deserves a, a major shout out. I, I thank God for the mushroom gods who like told us at the club that day, like, he, it was like an angel. Like, no. I was like, he's our guy, Erica. I know it. <laughs> and boy, was that intuition right? Because he came with this. He had this. He had his boots. He had on a fucking cowboy hat. And those jeans came off. And I saw Rico's full ass and something else. I don't know. I, I couldn't tell. Maybe from envy. Maybe people in the audience saw something. I didn't see anything. But he did some like incredible like three acrobatic three some moves that I never <laughs> seen. He yeah he. He put me in a, wind, a windshield wiper. wiper. He did a windshield wiper move with you. That I was, was crazy. I, I, I was like I was on a roller coaster. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. I mean, he picked me up too. I was like, okay, Rico. I thought you were a smaller man when I met you that day. I was club. like, he's not small. Yeah. No, he picked your ass up. He, he sure was, did. He showed your ass. Thanks, he Rico. Was small. <laughs> we also had a nice gentleman um, come be Erica's sub. I got, and I also saw that picture, and I was like handing you a cake with like the leash. Was it good? It was so good, and I, I really wanted to. I meant to send it to you and be like, "Who's best? Fr- who, no, what best friend gives you gifts like this?" <laughs> um, but now we need to have a sub in every city. So if you're listening and you like to be humiliated, and you would like to be humiliated by either one of us or both of us. We're coming to a city near you. You need to reach out. DM us. DM us. This is very important. We can't. We can't go without it. No, we cannot. Um, do you want to tell the people wh- wh- what cities we're hitting? I do. So first, we're hitting my hometown of Philadelphia. Let me check my notes. I was like, "Wow, you're really going freestyle? You remember the dates? No, you're not be fucking shit up when I do that." <laughs> we're going to be in Philadelphia, March thirteenth. Whoop whoop. D.C. March fourteenth. Whoop whoop. New York March sixteenth. Hey hey. Atlanta March twenty first. Hey. And then Charlotte March twenty second. Hey. So we are, and we have more dates pending. So yeah. that's just what we got so far. So if you are in D.C., New York, Philly, Charlotte, and any of the other cities, she said. Oh wait, wait. There's some new hot incoming news. Ooh. We're gonna be in Dallas four nineteen, baby. Whoop, whoop. Oh, that's the day before 420. Yeah. But you know you can't smoke in Dallas. Oh, fuck. Or we almost got we almost got kicked out of the hotel. We're going to have to get the fuck out of there. We're in and out. Like, immediately. Like, we got to go. We got to be somewhere good on 420. Oh, right. right. We're going to be somewhere, like, liberal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, we almost, yeah, you're right. We almost did get kicked out of our hotel yeah, in we Dallas. Yeah, we can't fuck around like that again. Um, but, yes, the I'm so excited for the rest of the Confessions Tour because... It really was a good pop off. The girls came out. The tribe showed out. We were like running late and we were rehearsing. And I heard like howling from outside. I'm like, are people getting in fights? They're like, <laughs> it's the tribe. They're waiting for you. I was like, oh my goodness. The girls have gone wild. They have. And yeah, the, the, the reason we found the sub was because of our confession line. So then the confession line was kind of lit. We didn't even get to share all the confessions, but we need more confessions. So if you have something you want to confess anonymously and get featured at the live show or even possibly on the podcast, please call 818-213-1287 and leave your confession. Please don't leave no bullshit. Please make it at least a little bit longer than, I don't know, two sentences and Make it juicy. Make it juicy. It's anonymous. You have nothing to lose. Unless someone's like, "Uh uh-uh, I know that voice. And if you're scared that someone's going to know your voice, they won't know your voice. Tell us what city not to play it in. Well, we could switch up. We could could choose what city. But yeah, I'm super, I'm super fucking excited. I feel like, like, touring is my rock star lifestyle. Like, we get to really embody different parts of our personalities. And that one is like, I was looking at those pictures. I'm like, oh, you can't tell me shit. We're rock stars. Can't, nothing. Can't tell me nothing. (laughs) Oh my god! I invited my cousin and shit. Everybody had a good time. So we invited <sighs> Supernova. Oh my god! He came and supported us. I hope he didn't scare that Black King. <laughs> we did scare the Black King. Supernova was with the shits. Even though when I asked him after, he said he was terrified. <laughs> I think he was terrified, but also having fun. So you know, it's a little bit of both. Um, also, you guys. In LA on December 9th, we are collabing with Susia NYC, which is our favorite play party in New York. You've heard us talk about it, you've heard about our experiences. Actually, if you listen to our episode, 
about our last tour, we actually (laughs) made a pit stop at Susia in between tour dates between New York and Philly because we had to stop at Susia because Luis has created such an incredible, amazing, sexy environment for free free environment. And I love to see so many black and brown people in there. It's for everyone, but it really is a space for, I feel like, our people to explore and play. And so we're we're collaborating with Susia and Mistress Marley. Shout out to Mistress Marley. Um, And we're doing a Susia play party here on December 9th in LA. So make sure you click the link in this episode and fill out the vetting form because I'm sorry, not everyone is going to be invited because we got to, we got to weed out, we got to weed out, you know, the weirdos. Um, And fill out the form and come party with us on December 9th. If you've never attended this kind of party, this is a really beautiful place to start. It's actually the first play party I ever went to, and it set the bar so motherfucking high. I don't, I can't. I, but now you're a partner. I that now I'm a partner, but now I can't even like really enjoy myself at other parties. Like, no, it's, it's not really, the same. Yeah, he's really created something special there. And the vetting forms have already been coming in heavy, and I've been looking at the pictures. It's gonna be some fine people there. It's gonna be a lot of couples, a lot of singles. It's really sexy. The the space is sexy. I think it's gonna be a lot of beautiful people, and it's just like I'm I'm excited to have something sexy and black in LA because we don't have we don't get a lot of that. And also, like, for those of you who've never attended any sort of play or sex party, there's no pressure. Like, I think people think that they, when they come, they have to do something. Per- yeah. yeah, they have to participate. It really is a place for you to just chill, t- you know, take in the vibes and, you know, and then you can decide what you want to do. But um, there really is a beautiful space that Luis has created with Susia. So if it's something that you've been interested in, it's something that maybe you want to experience with your partner, this is the space. So I can't wait for December 9th. There'll be a lot of our VIP guests up in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, speaking of parties, we also just got back from um, Joshua Tree. We went to Joshua Tree for Erica's birthday, even though Erica tried to cancel it like 14 times. Um, I didn't, it was only one time and you didn't even know about it. It was a secret. I could feel it energetically. <laughs> energetically, I could feel like you're on some fuck shit. I don't know if there's any other Scorpios in the building that get really weird around our birthdays, but I am her and she is me. And, you know, I've been going through a transition. I've been going through like, uh, like a transition out of a relationship and it's been weird and I've been just, it's been hard. It's been, I've been going through a hard time. And letting that go and departing from that and really like being okay with it. And so I don't know. Part of me was just like I want to be with my friends and feel supported and loved. But then also there was another part of me where I was like I just want to be alone. Leave me the fuck alone. I don't want to be in my cave and cry and just do whatever the fuck I want. I don't want to answer any questions. I don't want to look at anybody. I don't want to see anyone's joy. I just no, I don't want to see anybody's joy. No. Um, that's how I was feeling that night. Fuck your joy. Yeah, honey. fuck your joy. I don't want to hear it. I mean, I love it for you, but I'm not there, so I just can't. Fuck your joy. It's too much. It's mirroring a, whatever I don't have at the moment, and I didn't know if I felt like dealing with that on my birthday. Um, but If you're sad, you can come. But <laughs> <laughs> only sad people are allowed are in my... Are you sad? Are you, you sad? You're you invited. <laughs> How happy are you? And then it's on a happy. scale from one to happiness. <laughs> where do you fall? Where you fall? Oh, four. Okay, come you can on. come. Five. Ooh. Ugh, it's a little bit too much joy for me. <laughs> um, yeah, but then I, I I emailed the Airbnb host and I said something weird, and I told them that actually I'm not even gonna tell you what I said because it's fucked up. But I was like, I just can't come, and they were like, Well, you can't get your money back, and I was like, come Okay, in. well we're coming. On the way, pack the car up. And did we pack the car up? Did we you pack the car? Thought mother we were fuck- leaving for. We thought we were moving. <laughs> we were moving there. I wish we could move because that house was fucking bomb. I want to release like an Airbnb secret list, okay? Because we've stayed at some beautiful. It is. It's going to be on Patreon. Our pa- I told you, told people we're releasing this Airbnb on Patreon it's because really I can't nice. let too many people know about this shit because it was perfect. It was like the perfect compound for a friend circle party, chill, whatever the fuck you want to do, mushrooms. Whatever, like sister circle, it's there. Everything. Sound bowl healing, and everyone has their own space. Like you're, you can go al- be alone if you want, and no one's gonna fuck with you. So I still got my alone solo weird time. Um, but it was perfect, and I'm just so 
happy that I didn't cancel it and they didn't let me because I really needed that. And then when we got there, my wife and, and um, surprised me and took us to the Integratron, which I've been, I think, talking to her about since probably the day I met her. <laughs> um, it's this amazing sound healing experience on the way to Joshua Tree, and it's built on a vortex. And the guy who created it got this download, or no, was visited by aliens from Venus, apparently, that told him to build this structure um, because he said that the aliens told him that people on earth are stupid because they don't live long enough. And if you build this vortex, build this structure on this vortex, you can extend your life. Um, he ended up dying. <laughs> Like in this weird, like eerie way, there's no like real answers. And then all his for all the all his work was like deleted and shit. Somehow it was like, it, like went yeah. missing and like the files were taken. So do you think he knew something? Like he was onto something. Maybe the aliens they they deleted everything. No, they told him to free us, and then the government. The government said fuck that. The government said fuck that. He's not going to free everybody from fucking getting old. So anyway, now it's a sound healing place and. It's just hypnotizing when you go in there. And I got a lot of downloads in that space. And that was like the way we started the trip. And then we went to the house, which when I got to the house, I was super high. I was just like, oh, my God, it's so amazing, which it was. But I think also I was I think we we're all kind of high. High from the integrity. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> um, and. Yeah, I just had such an amazing time with you guys. and Oh, my God. Even though maybe our happiness was above a 4.5? Yeah. Crazy. I really... Like, I, being around your happy friends can be nice. Isn't that crazy? I needed... <laughs> Breaking news. <clears throat> I needed that. And also, I also spent a lot of time... I feel like I was romanticizing myself, and that's what I've kind of been doing over the last... Since that, since that trip, I realized that part of my healing in this space that I'm in is romancing myself and like doing things for myself that I would want my partner to do for me. Yeah. Um, and that's been really good. And it started there. I took a lot of baths with coconut milk <laughs> and rose petals and essences. Um, and I already like buy myself flowers every week and stuff anyway. But I realize like that's, I feel like this is part of the medicine that's going to help me move through this with more ease because it's felt very rough trying to get through this. And so if you're listening and you're going through something difficult, um, try romanticizing yourself, like really do the romantic things that you would hope your partner would do. Like literally set up your room or set up dinner for yourself exactly how you hoped your partner would do with rose petals, incense, like set the tone, set the mood and just see what happens because I don't know, it's been feeling it's been feeling really good to do that and I like look forward to it. Um so that that trip I got a lot of downloads and one of the downloads was was that romanticizing my life more um intentionally like trying to get in my own pants basically you have to I, mean, I, I remember doing this when I was like realizing I'm a people addict and I'd move into my own place and like even when Luna wasn't there usually I would try to go out like let me go do something get into something and finally I was like bitch cook yourself a meal <laughs> and then when I start to do it I'm like I can cook really good and <laughs> I'm fun <laughs> you know, like sometimes I would start to notice I would get around people and then I was just like this is not that fun. Like, I don't want to force myself to talk to someone that doesn't come naturally or I feel like I have to fill up space. Even when, like, love songs come on, start to address them to yourself. <laughs> Instead of them making you feel sad, when you hear, like, love songs, start, I start to, like, re relate them to loving myself. And then they always, it always made sense. Mm. So that's always fun. And I think women, I've had this major download this weekend. And just from, like, a number of women in my life and also reading this book that I've been reading for so long <laughs> um, called Communion by Bell Hooks. But it's all about like how society fucks women from the jump about like, like just our, our worth, our belief system. But I just know so many smart women who get caught up with like guys that are not on their level. <coughs> and it, it, I am her. And it, I am her. I had this epiphany. Like I, a couple of my friends had called me. My mom had called me talking about her friends not being her friend no more because she's still married to my dad. I'm thinking, what are you talking about? 
I was literally had this epiphany. I'm like, so many women will like don't even fuck around in their power because they are so caught up with niggas that are not on their level. And like, it's literally, it's our kryptonite. And if we don't catch it, we will like fuck around and miss our purpose. So it's just like, <coughs> I feel like it's super important to <coughs> romanticize yourself and to really- Chase the money. Chase the motherfucking money. Chase Is that, the money some? weed. <coughs> oh. <laughs> oh no, yeah, I was talking about the weed. Not chase the money, but I'm, I'm happy that you were ready to co-sign that with me though. <laughs> I was like, yeah, fuck these niggas. Chase the money. Oh, no. I was talking about Chase the money gave us this weed. <laughs> uh, but also Chase the money. That too. Like, for real. Um, yeah, but it's just like, it's so diabolical, the self-destruction that happens. And I only feel like we can only make the men raise up if we withhold the relationships from the ones that are not worthy. That's the only way they're going to embrace their, their fucking healing vibes. Mm. And this is like, there's just... And I know it's every woman listening. You, you've been that bitch. You know a friend who's being that bitch right now. Or you're being the bitch right now. <laughs> but there's always, like, it's women. Women do this, specifically. I don't think men get caught up on women as much as women get Absolutely caught up on men. Absolutely not. Because right? we're the healers and nurturers of the world. All we want to do is be is fucking be loved and nurtured and heal people. Love me. Let me heal you. Are you, love are, are you okay? I know you just beat my ass. But, but are, are you okay? okay? I, I feel know. so bad. I, I should have made you do that. I, yeah. Like it's I, know you, I know you're going through a tough time right now because you ain't paid the bills. Oh, my God. Yeah. So <laughs> that's my public service <laughs> announcement. But, yeah, we had a really, 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 really epic time in Joshua Tree. Like, it was just perfect and beautiful. And, like, friends came in and out. Shout out to Brittany. Um, Trap Yoga Bay who came and... When we say, we like, we did some sound bowls on the side of a fucking desert mountain under the fucking full moon eclipse and took the fuck off. Took off, okay? Thanks, you solely magic, bitch. <laughs> yeah, shout out to solely magic. Those mushrooms were wonderful. And, you know, that part felt really special to me. That was like the gift to myself. I really was so happy to be able to, like, be lead the circle for my friends like i really i needed to do that to kind of like remember who the fuck i am for a second <laughs> you know and like sit and create the space for all of us to share and talk and like god i was just like god i love women i love orlando i just love our friends like how we can just we can do the party whatever the fuck thing but then we can also sit here and have real conversations and really connect to all of the elements earth water bitch we connected to every element out there space space <laughs> i went to space. fire like fire. you know yeah. and and it was just so um soul filling for me and i feel like i've been on a high since then um and i just feel like things are really already starting to like reveal themselves to me because i finally am like letting moving through something that i've needed to move through you know and it's it's it just doesn't make it any easier i know, you know? it's not easy but it feels like even being next to you feels different like i feel the difference in your energy like i feel like not your happiness but like your inner like you coming back out to play you know i feel that and it's like in little ways but it's like it's so crazy when you're close to somebody and um, like when their energy, like just like we're so close. Like if something's wrong with me and I try to lie, like the bitch knows I'm lying, you know. And it's vice versa. I'm like, are you good? And I, we don't even have to say anything, but we know. But it's just like seeing you emerge <coughs> from that. It feels good. And like having that be like the trip for that felt good. And being able to, we always talk about bringing our friends into our circles because we go away and we retreat. But it was really nice to like spend time with people we haven't spent time with. Bring our fa like our friend family to our space that way. You know, and um, no, like, and you know, I like. How, when was the last time you had a circle with your friends and had an intentional moment? Yeah, like let's take a moment. You said, like, "Hey, we're gonna take this moment right now," and you're free. You're free to cry. You're free to be honest. You're free to say, like this, like this is what fucked me up this year, or like I'm just taking a break. Like you're free. That was the. I think that was the most beautiful thing about this experience, and like we know this about our friend group, but it was a confirmation of like the space that we hold for each other and just how genuinely good it feels to be free 
with other people. Like when I say we played, we played and we laughed and we were naked and like there was no nothing sexual or weird about it. And it was just like, and we cried and we did all these things. But like there was a moment where we sat at the top of the hill and we were like, how are you doing this year? How is like because this eclipse was about like the last 18 months or last yeah, the cycle. two years. <clears throat> so, you know, like when have you sat with your friends and asked, how have the last two years been for you? Really? How are you feeling now? Mm -hmm. You know, and like it's like a where were you at then? And, and like really having to even think about that, because that's why we were in that circle. I was like thinking when I was setting up those bowls and I was like thinking about that, I really had to think like, where the fuck was I? It was asking us to think about this cycle of time where I had to really think about where was I? Where was I at that time and where am I now? And it's been a motherfucking journey of a lot of a lot of shit, a lot of deep reckonings of my soul it feels like and realizations and having to really reflect on who I want, who I am at this moment versus now was like oh shit a lot has changed but you know like ultimately you are who you are though that's also the thing too it's like you also have those realizations like oh no bitch that's just you <clears throat> yeah and and yeah and but also i think it's an opportunity because so often we are moving so quickly we don't give ourselves permission to be like damn bitch you got through a lot of shit this year or damn you've accomplished a lot you know or you have changed a lot you know like we're so busy looking forward that we forget to look back and sometimes looking back and sitting in it and saying it out loud it's it's worth it you know like you've come out of some shit you've accomplished some shit so yeah i really <coughs> thoroughly enjoyed that yeah. and like Orlando was the only guy until Sebastian got there for 20 seconds <laughs> but he cooked for us and it felt good you know it's like I know it's not always it's probably not always fun for him to be the only man amongst six women <laughs> but he did he really he really showed up for us in big ways and it made me so grateful for him it's like as my friend as my lover just like it's nice to have a, some man hands around and he cooked for us and he watered us and it was like a really nice balance of like a example of like a example of having like the divine masculine in a space full of women especially a space where women are free to be mm -hmm. you know and like when, when i say we were literally being like bitch was sitting we we're four people in jacuzzi one bawling one laughing <laughs> all naked and not talking <laughs> That was the best because you know, like you, sometimes you just need to cry and not be asked if you're okay. No, you don't. You don't can't. interrupt me. I am fucking crying. Leave me the fuck alone. I am releasing. Like, and that was the vibe. There was no, there was no question. No one like it was. It was fine. more like, are we talking to each other? I don't think so with the words. Okay. <laughs> and then you come back and you're like, oh. <laughs> like, sorry, did I float on you? Like, you would think the jacuzzi was six feet long. Like, it was, <laughs> it was a very beautiful, powerful lovely birthday yeah <clears throat> yeah it was like just a like just the perfect mixture of ratchet and healed <laughs> ratchet healing red shield red shield <laughs> red shield <laughs> meet my lover red shield <laughs> she's so fun and then i named her <laughs> red shield my, my firstborn child <laughs> um but it was great yeah oh and i did feel like we went to space joshua tree has that magical effect like you're going to a space globe and you feel like the speed, like the, I don't know, like the. I felt the energy. In yeah, that like the house. indigenous people that once lived there before we came and took it. It made it Airbnb land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no TVs, just music, vibes, good food. So many backwoods. Mm. <laughs> so many backwoods. Backwoods sponsored <laughs> Erica's birthday. They didn't even know it. <laughs> and they didn't even know it. That's and, crazy. And so did Honeypot. <laughs> literally had honey pie in all the bathrooms i'm like that's we like where i felt very i was like i am a mature woman i feel like mary Kay of, of honey pot i was like this is how rich people have the curated their homes and i am rich so every room shall have honey pot in every bathroom for every bitch there will also be the honey pot foam because we had foams we had wipes why we were, not our poos our poosies, our poosies, were, our keen. poosies were taken care of they were very nourished and we played games. We did. We made. We played big Jenga. We played pool. Um, you would have thought we were like <laughs> kids on like a playground. Like, let's go play this now. We were. <laughs> when like, we got in that house, we said, "Oh, there's bitch. There's too much shit in here. We got to try. I was like, we we got to get our money's worth. We need. We need to schedule activities. So we're gonna start at the jacuzzi. We're gonna move to the garage where there's a pool table. Then we're gonna do a dance party. 
Then we're gonna, we literally, this is what we did. And mm. I was like, if we are not seven years old. <laughs> and then at some point we will have like a 2 a.m. barbecue. We said that. And then we did that. We had a 2.30 a.m. barbecue, which I don't know how Orlando did it, but he was fucking it up over there. I, I, after a mushroom trip. I saw him with a little glass of water, like sprinkling the chicken. I said, at 2.30, this nigga is not playing games. I, I, I don't know. I woke up, ate that food. I must have, I think I left the plate right there. and just. We did. Back. I left the, everyone everything. Left the plate. We came out and all the chicken, the salmon, everything was laid out. Everyone went to sleep. No one had done. a single ounce of energy. But it was like, it, I feel like a high school student who had access to a luxury house and <laughs> drugs. <laughs> Honestly. My friend was like, I wonder if you're a good kisser. And then like we like kissed and Erica's like, that wasn't no kiss. And I was like, oh. I forgot that happened. <laughs> I Wait, like, I forgot that happened until like a few days ago. And, and I was, like, I had that thought and I meant to call you and be like, bitch, do you remember this happening? We never I, talked. <laughs> but the whole thing is like, first of all, why are you challenging me? Erica was like, that is not no kiss. I was like, then I was like, come here, bitch. Like, why are you so rough? Because I'm an instigator. And then literally I was like, wow, we are 16 years old. Like, this is like a. That fuck. was 16 of me. That was, <laughs> that was very 16 The of whole me. trip, I was like, are we adults? Is this adulthood? Like just being 16 with a little bit of money? <sighs> but you know what? It was a reminder that like you need to quarterly go play with your friends. Well, that was the thing that came up for me too. I was sitting there with one of our friends and I was sitting in front of my little fire that I had in my room because I also made sure that we used ev that part too. <laughs> and we sat there and we talked and I was telling her that I realized like I had this download that we must play. Like I that I need to play with my daughter even more to keep that this connection in this time period where she's at right now and like, because like she inevitably will start to go play with other people, but I always want her to know that she can come play, play yeah. here. And also that just opens up, I feel like more opportunity for conversation and like just understanding at this age. But then also I was thinking, well, look at what I'm doing here with my friends, I'm playing. And this is so healthy and this feels so good and this feels so nourishing and, and like, pleasurable and like I feel sexy and like it's for me and it's mine. Right. There's like we're not we don't have to go to the club and encompassing and, yeah. and embodying this like this sex the sexiness for ourselves, you know? And um and just opening our and when you do that you start to just your mind automatically starts to open. open. And that's why you get those downloads when you go to those spaces because you're also making a choice to do that. And you're just at ease. Like yeah. you know when we got there like we didn't talk about work, a computer, a cell phone. And that shit came out because we knew it wasn't possible to do both. And like, but that's when I felt like it, 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 like it energized us in a way where you could literally just be without worrying about what time it is and what's next. And like, I, I, yeah, I think it's so necessary. Adult recess. Adult recess. Adult recess. You have to take breaks, but not just to do like adult shit, to do like low key teenage shit. <laughs> It was very, very, very soul filling. Um, what else, my love? We should talk about something else. Um, I don't know. No sé. I think that's it. That's it. That was so great. That was so great. <laughs> um, so I hope what you got from this is adult recess. So that'd be the name of the episode. Adult recess. Yes. I love that. It's so necessary. Yeah. Let you like tantalize all your senses and do like silly shit. Do silly shit. Be naked. Laugh. Don't care if anyone's looking. And only have friends that you can not care if anybody's looking. If, if I mean, I think, I think that's the thing. I'm sure there's people listening that are like, I don't even know who I can do that with. But you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how many of your friends are waiting to do some of the shit like this. It's not just you. You guys just aren't talking about it. You guys, you guys have to like meet each other like where you're at and have the conversation. And, and get... you have to take chances with people you may not always hang out with all the time. That's true. Because there's people like literally one of my friends that came, we met in the DMs. Mm-hmm. And we never hung out with her before. We had our other friend pick her up. Mm -hmm. And she, I was like, have you ever met her in real life? I thought, I was like, I've never met her before. I think I was like, we met one time drunk, like leaving a party. But I'd never like hung out. Oh, but yeah. we were supposed to, but we didn't. And I was like, is it, was it where we're telling her to come for a four day trip? Not at all. Because mm -hmm. you know who you can call when you, when you're open to just like plant, like, you know, letting your guard down and not really giving a fuck, you know, like what people think. Or, or at least not surrounding yourself <coughs> with you, with people who even vibe on that that 
frequency, you know, and you kind of know who that is. Well, I think, I mean, even I had that intention when I was planning it. I was really thinking like, okay, I'm going, I'm, I'm reflecting on all areas of my life currently, not just my love space, but like my friend space. And if like, how can I expand? Like I have met all these amazing people, but I haven't been able to really spend time with certain people that I know even upon first meeting, like I've even maybe not even meeting just in our exchange and our energy, knowing I wanted to understand them better or like we had things to exchange. Right. And I was like, well, why don't I just invite a few of those people to my birthday in this intimate space where I can finally do that. And it's not like, Oh shit. Like we keep trying to get together or we're having coffee for five minutes or like an hour. And then we don't see each other again for another two months. Three years, it's right. so hard to, <clears throat> it's so hard to make friends in adulthood and like continue to, you know, not feel like it's interrupting your regular scheduled programming. Right. You know, right. so really, plug really out. getting out of that. And so, yeah, that's why I think it's like even just that's kind of the vibe of the retreat, too. It's like bringing people in, people coming to have this adult recess and really not knowing who's going to be there, you know? Right. That's and why it, those I'm so like the people that come to our retreat, like it's, it takes bravery to do that. Like that's a big first step for a lot of those women that come and it's a big one and it's a transformational one. Well, that's sometimes you need that big first step to kind of know that you can do it. And then all the other big steps don't feel as big and as, mm -hmm. and as daunting and as scary because you're like, fuck it. I did this one thing and it are, and it feels so good. Yeah. yeah. We were talking about that last night about, um, opti like being optimistic or being, um, or being, you know, uh, optimistic or pessimistic and like worrying about things happening and I was like one of the things I've realized with like faith or like magic or whatever is like once you do the one big thing you start to kind of realize that like you you do have this like this magic and once you've like kind of worked that way up then you're, you're less fearful of things going wrong because you're like well I've, I've made I've, I've been made a million dollars once even if I go broke like I know I can make it again mm -hmm. you know what I mean but people fear that instead of just like stepping into it because you kind of build that tool of knowing that there's something magical at, at, over the fear right right <sighs> you oh. hear that? Believe in your magic. Go for it. Just do it. <laughs> Words of Nike. Just do it. Keep. <laughs> um, I picked a card. I don't know if I love this card, but I'm gonna read it anyway. Okay. It's a five, right? That's a five. Five of Wands reversed. Um, it suggests that you are facing internal conflict and are unclear on where you stand on important issues. You may try to work through your point of view on contentious topics such as abortion, immigration, globalization, or the environment, or you may navigate personal issues such as whether to stay or leave a particular relationship or job. You have others around you who have strong views about what you should do, and this is creating an enormous amount of tension and disagreement. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you think you have a clear perspective, someone challenges you on it, and you discover new information and you change your standpoint again. This process is beneficial and will help you come to the well-researched and well-thought-out viewpoint. Know too that there's no right answer and someone will agree, someone will disagree with your path you choose, s with any path, path that you choose. So find the option that sits best with you. Align your head and your heart to discover a sense of peace within yourself. Hmm. Sounds like an email they got today. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a little someone bit more... has very strong opinions about what i should do <laughs> isn't that crazy to like when, when you think about someone having an opinion over what you should do it's just so strange like but why does it matter i'm not even you <laughs> be you i'll be me yeah yeah and then like to be mean about it <sighs> hurt people hurt people it's a fact. Some of these old ass quotes are really hitting today. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. Hurt people, hurt people. <laughs> Not old ass quotes. They are. Not just do it, bitch. Just, I mean, you know, Nike's Nike's not like a a new brand. No, it's not. You know. <laughs> <sighs> does that resonate uh, resonate with you, Arturo? I feel like it does. I feel like it represents where I'm at. That yes. I have to be in my mind and my body and spirit and like be at peace with 
my choices, my decisions, how I want to present myself to the world and knowing that not everyone is going to love that and saying that's okay, you know? And I'm okay with that, that I'm not gonna be able to please everyone. It's fucking impossible, mm -hmm. but I can please myself and that's what I should be doing anyway. Right, right, you know? yeah. And um, yeah, that does resonate. Yeah, I agree. Can't please everybody, might as well please you. <laughs> Is that the affirmation of the day? Oh, yeah. Can't please everybody. Mine as Might well. Might as well, well please, please you. you. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you, guys. So happy to see you. Or you see me. <laughs> you see me. <laughs> we see you. I see you. I you see you me? there with that ponytail up. Just got back from the gym, huh? It was hard. You saw that hot guy this time. But you did it. <laughs> anyway. Um, I love you. Make sure you come see us on the road. Hit the hit the link in this episode to check out our tour dates. Go check out our website. Everything is there. Retreats, merch, Black Friday sales, Cyber Monday sales. Fucking the play party is not there. You have the DM. You have the DMs. That. Shh. That's secret. Shh. That's not for the mainstream. Shh. 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 Um, <laughs> <laughs> our newsletter is kind of lit. And um, make sure you rate and review this episode. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're listening and you want to look at our beautiful faces as we recount our days, lives, and opinions. Um, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.